Hello, hello, welcome back to another episode of 343. My name is AF. This is episode 88, and boy, do we have an amazing show for you guys today. Joining me today, as always, my reliable partner, Riaz Parker. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good. Um, excited that the warmer weather is upon us. So it's making my, my mood slightly better than it used to be. Um, so yeah, very, very excited, very happy. You say that, and then we just had our coldest day in like the past week. Yeah, it's and not summer yet. Tomorrow is going to be even colder. So yeah, but like yeah, it's got all, all, all the days, you know, it's going to be 27 yeah, to 8 every day. I'm hoping that this is just a phase and it will it will pass soon just so that the sun can come back. What do I? No, it's, you doing it's definitely, yeah, it's definitely warmer in the next coming days, but not tomorrow though. Yeah. I'm good, man. I'm good. Happy to be back. Um, we had a good um, weekend in terms of football. You had um, a good weekend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the only one that had a good weekend after the three of us. Um, just said that we have to go into another international break after a few games, but yeah, um, it was a good weekend of football, man. Yeah, for sure. And we'll get to that a bit later, uh, just to go through a rundown of what we're going to be covering today. And it's just as, as usual, the weekend review, we're going to be touching on uh, a few of the matches. Um, and then we're going to go into what Odo I just spoke about now, and that is are the players playing too much football. Um, then we're just going to shine a spotlight on a couple of top performers in the Premier League so far this season. And then ending it off, we normally end our show with predictions. Just So just to uh, keep with, with that sort of pattern, we are going to take stock of where we are in the season right now. And just do some predictions for the top goal scorer for the end of the season, top assister, and top clean goalkeeper, clean, clean sheets. I don't know how to word that. Anyways, you get what I mean. But yeah, just to 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 get the ball rolling nicely. Um, Odua, I'm gonna I'm gonna come to you right now and just make some sense of this Eric Ten Hag position. What is happening? I think it's a media circus out there. The media don't know anything what that's happening. I feel like they are making up stories. But yeah, I'd like to get your thoughts on what you think is happening over at United. Um, okay, so <laughs> I don't I don't I don't think Ten Hag is getting sacked anytime soon. <laughs> there seems to be there seems to be a word that um, from a backing from the from the owners. Um, saying that they still have Ten Hag's back, um, there's still some time. They're still, they're still giving him some time to to try and improve the team. But the way that I see it is, it's it's not it's not working out too well for him. Um, just to just to mention that, um, yeah, you United bought a couple of players, um, but they're still playing with um, Johnny Evans and Maguire at the back. So my thinking is, what were those players for that they brought into the team at the start of the season? So, yeah, for me, it's not looking good. Um, if I was the owner, oh, I'm, I'm glad I'm not the owner, but if I had to make a decision um, in terms of Ten Hag, I would have sacked him a long time ago because the team doesn't seem to have any direction. The team, it was supposed to be building something from last season. That didn't happen. They bought a few players, quite a few players this um, this season. Those players are not being utilized. So I don't see where the plan is. He's playing old old players that have been there at United for the past two seasons. So I'm not sure um, what the plan is, but yeah, I guess that's the situation at the moment at United. Yes, do you think that there is some semblance of a, of a plan that's happening in the background do you think that the that the owners believe in some some sort of plan? Do you think that there's some sort of agreement that's happening behind closed doors that we are in the dark about? I, I don't think so. I think that the issue came where pre-season, right? The end of last season, I think that's where the issue came, where they've now made the bed and now they have to lay in it because it was then that they had to make the decision of whether to replace him or not. And to be fair, a lot of people said that he shouldn't be replaced. He should stay. Um, he's a good coach. He, he can turn the team around. 
And unfortunately, it hasn't happened. They've backed him more even. And even though they've still backed him, like what I said, they still have to go to the 57-year-old who gets man of the match at the end of the day, um, which is ridiculous. And now they can't see him really because it's not like he's doing terribly, which he kind of is because they still don't know how they're playing. But it's, it's a bit early still as well. So it's 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 a bit of a cash money situation uh, for the board. I don't think... I think it's very clear that if he doesn't kind of improve things by Christmas, then he will be gone. Like if they don't, if they aren't at least in the, I guess, what can we say, top eight um, by Christmas, he will, he will have to be gone because at the end of the day, there's still there's, there's an improvement, right? They haven't been playing better football than last season. They just have, if the players, I guess, they have a better playing 11, but still playing crap football. So I'm not sure how, like, the, the they equate it. So it's going to be very difficult for them to kind of, Stack him now after having backed him in the summer, especially after he spent so much of their money as well. Yeah. Um, so it's very difficult to, to kind of to be in their position. Like what says, I wouldn't want to be in their position either as well because, uh, you, like, yeah, they've made the bid. So now it's difficult to, to know when to sack him. But if he's not going to kind of produce the results and get United further up the table, because he has no excuse now, kind of, at least to kind of have an identity going forward. He has no excuse because he's brought in how many millions and millions of money high earning players that have, that have cost so much money and they still have no identity going forward or defending really so i think yeah it's going to be very difficult moving forward for for both the manage, management manager and the 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 group uh, the, the owners as well because when is the right time to um kind of make the decision um but but with, with you af how do you feel about it watching them every week like how does it kind of we when when do you kind of draw the line? Where, where's the line in the sand where you like okay, he has to go? <laughs> so it's it's crazy, right? Because like one moment that it might it might be like the most dire thing that I'm like watching. Like it's yeah. it's so so bad. And then you fast forward about like ten to twenty minutes in the same match, and you can see some sort of pattern of what they're trying to achieve, but then they just fall back. And then they go, they revert to their old ways again. So I don't know if it's because I mean, Benny, Benny McCarthy gave an interview about two weeks ago where he spoke about like how how much of a tactical genius Eric Tenag is, which is crazy because all of us fans we're watching the football week in, week out, and we aren't seeing what he's saying. So yeah. either Tenag is a tactical genius, but he just has absolutely no clue how to get that message across to his players. Um, and and sorry, otherwise is that is that over on your side? <laughs> yeah, it could be. <laughs> Let me just mute. Um, yeah, so if it's just like how he's trying to get that message across and I feel like the absence of a left back is a huge part of what's happening right now. Yes, you've spoken about this before with Trent Alexander-Arnold. The, the fact that Diego Dallo coming in inverting leaves whichever left center back extremely isolated and the opposition teams, they're exploiting that every single game. But is he and I'm not making an excuse. Like, what's the situation there? Why, is he, why does he keep coming in? I, I'm assuming he's coming in because he's poor with his left foot. So he comes in with his right foot to try and assist the midfield and then play the left winger from that sort of in, inverted role, which I don't, I don't agree with. It leaves the in, entire left side completely exposed. exposed. And yeah, yeah the, like every single team that we play against, that's, that's exhibit A for them. That is where they go to immediately. They... They try to go to that left side and they know that they're going to get Leecher one-on-one or whichever left, si- left side is center back one-on-one and it's easy pickings for them. It's happened week in, week out. And last week, it just showed with Johnny Evans at left center back, he doesn't have the pace that um, a younger center back or Leecher would have, but he has experience. And he was anticipating what other players would be doing Granted, they played against a Villa team that completely ran themselves into the ground against Bayern Munich midweek. Yeah. So that's definitely something that played into United's favor. 
But yeah, I'm like I feel like even if Leecher was playing, he wouldn't be doing the things that Johnny Evans did. Johnny Evans anticipated so many moves, and it's crazy that he's a 37 year old, and he's probably at the current moment our best centre back after all that money spent. So basically, you're saying that you'll play Johnny Evans over Leecher every week from now on. That's what I'm hearing. <laughs> right now, right now, I think with the current form. I would probably do that, which is okay. crazy because I would never have admitted something like that probably like two or three months ago. That's true. That's why I was surprised when you said it. But also, I want to, I want to, so, so, so where's the line then? Um, at what point do you think that they need to make a decision and kind of either, okay, yes, we're backing the manager till the end of the season or like, okay, no, we, you, we're not seeing any improvement. You have to go. So I think he gets the full November. Um, and I think that they will probably start interviewing people now already behind closed doors. Nobody will know about it, but they'll just have it as a sort of a plan B in case November doesn't pan out. And if it doesn't pan out, I think there's a gazillion games in December. So imagine keeping him until the end of December and he still gets the, the poor results, then United's going to probably be languishing relegation spots. So... Um, Come on, dude. We are currently (laughs) five points away from relegation. (laughs) Currently five points away from relegation. So Uh, also, like on the other, on the other, on the other side of the coin, Spurs is only two points ahead of us. So exactly, exactly. Anyways, so uh, if if results don't change in November, I think that's when they pull the trigger and they'll have somebody already up their sleeve to to appoint. They do already. Rudy's on the bench already. That's what's happening. That's why they employed him, isn't it? To take over. Yeah, when they yeah, yeah for sure. Back. That's 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 always been my theory. That's always been my theory. He came in and he's going to be the backup, but I I just have a feeling that they are probably interviewing Tuchel just as uh, which wouldn't be a, a bad player. appointment, to be honest. Yeah. Why but, do you okay. think of Southgate? There we go. Now we're talking. Like, all right. like, like I just said, right, okay, we'll move on to the... <laughs> I'm not going to be tolerating any, any Southgate opinions over here. Southgate in. Southgate in. Southgate in, man. Southgate in. <laughs> just going, going according to the other... Um, uh, with the other games that happened this past weekend... Um, did you guys catch any any of the games? Um, or do I, I'm just going to go go to you with that Liverpool Palace game? Uh, Palace looked absolutely terrible for the entire first half. Uh, they came out at halftime. Oli Glasner probably just gave him, I don't know what he said to them, but also it was his tactics in the first place that <laughs> made them um, play the way that they did in, in that first half. But yeah, they, they came out in the second half. They actually played some better football. But all in all, like I, I don't know what's happening with Crystal Palace. They had a great season or end of the season last season. Uh, the the loss of Joaquin, uh, Joaquin Anderson and uh, Michael Odise, um, like I can I, I think that they truly feel those gaps because Ismail Asa came in, uh, Edin Ketia came in, Trevor Chalaba came in, but it's not the same. Uh, but yeah, Udwa, just uh, sliding it over to you. Uh, how was how how were you as a Liverpool fan feeling watching that game? And then also there was that uh, VAR incident as well, where Crystal Palace should have had a penalty. Cool. Um, so when when Jota scored that goal, I think it was in the, on the twelfth minute or something. It was very early in the game. I thought, here yeah, we're going to score at least three goals in the first half and maybe one or two in the second half. Um, yeah. But yeah, obviously that didn't happen. Not that we didn't have a, we didn't have any opportunities, but we just didn't put them away. Second half, like you said, um, Palace came out. They played very well. Um, they also had a couple of opportunities that they should have scored and they didn't. Um, in terms of VR, man, I'm always just happy. <laughs> I'm always just happy if, if it doesn't go against us. I'm always just happy because Liverpool is not very lucky when it comes to VAR. So if it was a what? bad thing, <laughs> what? Then I don't, for, from, from my view, I mean, come they on, are. last season, come on, last season. Yeah, how last season they gave us a goal. I mean, 
Yeah, they, they, they didn't uh, against us. <laughs> they, they, they gave offside when it was clearly onside. Exactly. Like. We got a couple of red cards. I mean, offside against Diaz. Um, so there's, there was quite a lot of situations where I felt like, nah, Liverpool should have won these games, but because of VAR, we didn't. So I'm taking anything. Against, if if VAR, VAR is for us this season, I'm taking it. Even if it's a small thing that I feel like was a penalty, which I think it was, but I'll take, um, I'll take it. Um, yeah, based on what happened last season. Yes. Did you catch any of that game? What is your uh, view on that VAR uh, incident? Yeah, it's difficult. Eh? It's difficult. Um, it's a. I, th- I think it's a pain as well. It's. Uh, but but I think it's difficult to say like stone wall. That's a penalty. He definitely pulled him. Uh, there's no doubt about it. It was very tactical, a uh, tactical pull, I would say. And I guess it's one of those where if it's given on the field, it's a penalty. And if it's not given on the field, it's not a penalty. So, um, and yeah, like what was says, I guess thing, we have to trust that things are going to balance themselves out by the end of the season, or whatever the case may be, <laughs> when it comes to VAR. Unfortunately, that's the world we live in. But I think that, that Lopo had a... Had, Lopo looking strong in the season, eh? Like, genuinely, I think that we are still still underestimating a run that they can go on. I think that they are serious title contenders. And it was just difficult that, I guess, you, you can see the change when, when Diaz, when, when I guess the first team doesn't start, the first team doesn't really start. Because, of course, they started in the midweek again in the Champions League. So, um, and some of the first team didn't start on the weekend. And... You could see kind of even though they started off very fast, they started off really well. Uh Jota with that goal, like what I said in the early in the early parts of the game. But um yeah, this is, but it's not much of a drop off either. Like it's a slight drop off, but not much. Like without Diaz, you get a little, little less energy, but that's it really. So I think the, the squad is really Curtis Jones had a good game, I think. Um, which was interesting because he hasn't like started a game in quite a while in the Premier League anyway. So I think they, and you they look, look really you look good. confident, eh? Maybe yeah. he was in position of the ball. He looks really good. I mean, and that's the that's the kind of um, squad depth that you need when you're challenging for the title, especially when you're in all these competitions, which we'll probably get onto later. But yeah, I think they look really good. Crystal Palace is for me the the one of the most disappointing uh, teams of the whole season. Even though the three, I guess, uh, promoted teams are also as bad, but Crystal Palace have been shocking this season, unfortunately. And if you if you remember. We did those predictions um, at the yeah. beginning of the seasons, whereby you asked which team do we think is going to improve um, for this season. I said Crystal Palace. So it's quite sad, man, to see them. <laughs> it's quite sad to see where yeah. they are um, in the league at the moment. Um, yeah. Even and though I did also mention that. Too. Yeah, it's, it's it's not too bad. It's not too bad. Like the, so the recruitment, I, I don't think that the recruitment was bad, though. Like it they, isn't. It isn't. they, they did like for like. I mean, like Anderson they went. They brought in players. players. Yeah, yeah. They got they quality quality players, players who are who are experienced in the Premier League. Yeah, I'm and it's, it's for crazy many, many because seasons. at the end of last season, like Mateta, he was the main guy, and yeah. I mean now against Liverpool, even he in the Olympics, the he was the main guy. Yeah, yeah, in the Olympics as well. Um, and then like now this past weekend, he starts on the bench and he comes on. And the moment he comes on, things change for Palace. So, I mean, I, I don't think that gamble played off, uh, paid off for, for Ali Glasner. But uh, just moving on to another game, the Chelsea Fighters. Did you guys catch that one? Did you guys catch the 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 absolute carnage that happened on the touchline? And then my guy Cole Palmer, he just took a took a Your set. Guy, he just he, he just. He just watched it all. He, he didn't care. He didn't want to get involved. That guy was just chilling. He was just watching. He grabbed his popcorn. Crazy. What do you guys make crazy. of that whole thing? Yeah, I mean, uh, oh, oh, that, that was actually quite that, that. That was cinema, I won't lie. I mean, that's like a man after my own heart, just like looking and laughing at all the chaos that's happening around him with, like you say, with his popcorn there. It was great. Just not getting involved. Look, I'm the star player on this field. I'm better than all of you guys sitting on his perch <laughs> there, just watching this nonsense go down. It was really great. But um, uh, both teams actually in that game have been have had a really good start to the season. 
surprisingly for, for, for us, I think neither of, none of us expected Nottingham Forest and Chelsea to have such a good start to the season and yeah. play, been playing such good football as well. And um, it's, it's been good to see. I mean, Cole Palmer is a freak of nature, isn't he? He's just amazing yeah, at what crazy. he does. He just picks up these little pockets of spaces and he finds yeah. passes that nobody else can see. And he's just, I mean, if they didn't have Nicholas Jackson, they would be scoring so much more goals. Not that Nicholas Jackson has been doing badly. Nicholas Jackson has mm. been doing pretty decently. But, I mean, he does miss still a lot. He's like, uh, you know, yeah. uh, poor man's mom and Tyler. Um, but... Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you know Whoa. what I mean? For, for Sal- Sal- I mean, Salah Sal- Sal- misses. He scores more than he misses, but he's he still he has the he has the odd howler every now and then, at least every game. Mm-hmm. But not 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 like Jackson who misses like every two seconds. Um, but yeah, so it was a good game to watch. I'm glad it ended in a draw, so that neither team could progress any further away from us or the other teams that are below them. Um, yeah. But Nuno's doing wonders, eh? Nuno's doing wonders, so it's, it's, they're going to be a team to watch out for for sure. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like, man, off, the, off the back of the one 0 at um, at Anfield as well. So yeah, yeah, that's- yeah I was going to mention that that was that was that was a good game. Um, in terms of um, the Forest side, um, Liverpool didn't play too well, even though they missed a, quite a lot of opportunities. Um, I felt like Forest did have a good game plan. Um, even even during the Chelsea game, they could have won that game. Um, because they, they they also had a lot of opportunities to score. Yeah, Chelsea. Yeah, they were down to ten men. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, they they had that save. I think it was in the ninety fifth minute, whereby they could have scored. But yeah, um, I felt like they had a good game. Chelsea also had a good game. I feel like any team could have could have won that game. I'm glad yeah. also that it it finished in a draw. Hundred percent. Yeah, no, that was like I, I love the fact that there's so many so many instances this season in the Premier League where if. Uh, um, with with all due respect, a mid table team goes up against uh, a top four team. Then the result isn't always. You think Forest are a top four team? That's impressive, eh? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was actually speaking about the Forest Liverpool game, but okay. Oh, oh, sorry. I thought you were talking about the um, Chelsea game. As long as you knew that I was talking about Chelsea, it's fine. Uh, but that actually takes me to my next one, and that was. Fulham versus Man City, and that wasn't all straightforward for City either. If Adama Traore actually scored all his goals, he would have had a hat-trick. And how many one-on-ones did he have? When I think about three or four, Dude, I when think he had three one-on-ones. I think he had three one-on-ones. He three could have gotten a hat-trick, yes. and they should have won Man City in that game because they completely outplayed Man City for the most part. Um, uh, and that's exactly what I mean. Like it's the the season has. I don't know if more players are tired, and we're going to get to that a bit later. But um, yeah, Odua, like, how, is the like we we saw the the post match how Pip was trying to coach Adama <laughs> to like give him some advice on like, how to convert his chances. But I mean, like we've had this discussion season in season out about Adama Traore being such a good player, but without <laughs> the in product. Yeah, and I feel like that's why that's why he didn't make it. He didn't quite make it at Wolves. Went to went to Barcelona. Didn't yeah, it, it, that didn't go well. Um, came back. Um, but then yeah, in that game, I think he should have scored at least four. Man, even the, at the three one on ones, there was another opportunity that he had. He could have scored at least four in that game. Um, no wonder Co- um, Pep was coaching him um, at the end of the game. But I think he's way past that. Give him some yeah. some a cross or a pass, he's gonna do that. But in terms of finishing, yeah, he's not gonna give you that. So I felt like City were lucky in that game. They were very lucky. Even the person that scored Kovacic, he doesn't he doesn't usually score. Um, yeah. And then in that game, he had two goals. Um, and then yeah, Doku scored the third one. City did not have a good game um, against Fulham. They just had those goals and they scored them. That's it. Um, Fulham had a, had a had a better game, had a better game plan. It's just unfortunate that they didn't convert their chances. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, Riaz, yeah, you want to say something? No, no. I was I was just gonna say like uh, the, the, what was said. Now the game plan from Fulham was was really really good. Like he played, he ended up playing a, a five at the back, and you you would associate the five at the back to to more defensive kind of mm. game plan or. 
the way where their yeah. team is going to go about it. But they were actually when as soon whenever they got the ball, they were very on the front foot. Like they they attacked City really well on the transition, um, and that's why Adama at the end of the day had all those chances to to kind of finish. Because even though they had five at the back, he just it's a simple thing. Like he just told Iwobi instead of playing on the wing, just come sit in here next to Tete here at the back. You have a nice five across there snap out the danger and then go on the counter and play the transition well. And that's what they did. And yeah. they, 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 he outthought Pep at the end of the day, Marco Silva. Um, he, 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 his tactics were better than Pep. So uh, I think that without Roddy, there's a way that we can get at the uh, City this season. And I think the team's going to have to take it as much, uh, as much as they can. And Ad- Adama yeah. was smoking, was smoking Walker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he was Yo. smoking Rico Lewis. That, that guy is quick. I was shocked, man. I was shocked. He just needs to work on his finishing. I don't know if that's going to happen. We need a Adama. Uh, <laughs> I've never seen kind of in sprint to something this season. <laughs> oh, that would be, that, that, that that be, be That will be one for that'd the ages amazing. just to see a sprint that'd like that. It's not a competition. It's not a competition, <laughs> guys. <laughs> but but the man is very quick. But yeah, you will take him out. Yeah. <laughs> we we are coming to our final fixture that we just want to review, and that was a team that led gonna, two 0 And you're gonna tell me that you lit this for last for a reason. And you're they lost worst. three two. You are the worst. I mean, so it just worst. shows how bad well, it, it shows how bad Manchester United <laughs> is. Like we made Spurs look like world beaters, and Brighton just came 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 to the party and they just tore them apart in the space of twenty minutes, which is insane. What? I, I, tell me, what was like? You definitely had had like a roller coaster of emotions over there. Yes. Or are you numb to it? Or was last week's <laughs> result something that pulled you with some sort, sort of optimism? No, I actually last week I, I knew we were beating a weaker team, so I, I wasn't really filled with optimism. It was just normal, like you know. Um, that's just that's just a job because I thought, <laughs> because you left it for last on purpose. But um, I was deeply hurt after the game. I won't lie to you. I'm still hurting from it because I mean, we. I mean, if you look at it, right, the first 45 minutes were probably the best 45 minutes that we've played the entire season. The entire season was it was the best 45 minutes of, of football we've played, and then the second half was the worst 45 minutes we've played since Ange took over. So I, it was so confusing to my brain, to my little old brain, to watch that game of football. And I fully blamed them, Sherwood. I knew it as I was watching the halftime, and we get to, who was it? I think Sherwood, um, Graham, someone, what's his name? The striker from Crystal Palace in Brighton. Glenn Murray, sorry. And I think someone else was in the studio, and they were talking. I think it was Scalzi, maybe. But anyways, um, they were talking, and Tim Sherwood was saying, oh, you know what? Uh, Brighton don't have a chance here anymore. Uh, Spurs walk away with this. <laughs> I'm just like, and I'm just like, what are you doing, Tim Sherwood? Why? <laughs> and then from that time, I knew I, I could see something was about to happen. And then literally in 13 minutes, we were gone. It was a shocking capitulation. I've, I've, oh, it was, uh, I, I could, I still, I, like I said, I'm still trying, I'm still reeling from it. It was very, very bad. And it, uh, I hope we don't kind of cave from your in because we're better than that at the end of the day. But, but we shouldn't take away the, how good of a team Brighton is, though, just by the way. Like yeah. last week, we said that United capitulated as well, but we played really, really well as well. So it's a double-edged sword, really. So we shouldn't take away how good Brighton actually played, but we should have won that game easily. We should have been far and away by halftime even. So it was difficult to, to, to handle. It's still difficult to handle. And I have a whole another week of international break to stew over this damn result. And um, yeah, we'll see what happens when we get back. That, that could be like a silver lining, though. Um, it could be like you give the players extra time just to the ones that aren't going um, away to international break. Just give them some time to um, like look back and just like... And whoop themselves. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure Angie's making them do laps over there or something. Like if he's still... Uh, if he didn't go on, on holiday like Eric Ten Hag supposedly did, um, <laughs> which is crazy. Like, I mean, like your, your, some of your players don't go out for international duty and they stay yeah, behind, the but the manager ends, ends up going, going on holiday. But anyways, um, yeah, like uh, I, I think that they, they can use this time to just to reflect and they know that they let, let themselves down, they let the manager down. But um, I don't think it's a bad thing. I think um, 
Spurs have a sort of a plan that they need to need to adhere by, and yeah. um, I think I think you guys will still be okay. Odua, what what do you think about that game? I had a question for Iaz. In terms of what happened in the second half, do you think Ange could have managed that game better, especially seeing after the first goal when Brighton scored? Do you think maybe he should have taken out one of the attackers, brought it, brought in a stable? Um, just to try and stabilize the midfield. Um, because I feel like after Brighton scored that first goal, that's when um that's when Tottenham started panicking. They got the second goal, um, and then after 10 minutes or something, they scored the third goal. So I think there was panic there, it wasn't managed properly. So yeah, why do you why do you think and should have should have done in that situation? Yeah, I hundred percent agree with you. I think that there should have been something done because like, I understand that he trusts the players because the players that were on the field is our best 11 that we have. Um, far and away, our best 11, besides Sonny, obviously, who's injured at the moment. But um, I, I definitely think that he should have done something, at least after the second goal. If not the first goal, at least after the second goal. Taken off with Doggy, brought on Spence or, or Archie Gray as well, just to stabilize something. Taken off one of the attackers uh, in terms of Madison or Kulusevsky and brought on um, Saw earlier or brought on uh, Busuma alongside uh, Bentancur something like that, player two sitting, just to kind of get the, the control back in the game. Um, because, uh, yeah, at, after the first goal went in, everybody, like you said, you used the word panic, and it's exactly what happened. Everybody started panicking, and uh, we had no control in the game anymore. Somehow, somewhere, every time Brighton came forward, it felt like they were going to score a goal. So, um, yeah, I think that it should, it, it could have, and he should have done something, at least when the second goal went in, or just before that, I think even, like you said. Um, but... He, I think he had, he had, he wanted, he wanted another goal to put, put the game to bed, and we didn't. At, at the end of the day, the players on the field didn't um, execute the game plan properly, which like they did in the first half, because you could see in the first half they did what they had to do. Everybody stuck to their guns. They played the way they were supposed to play, the way Ange wants them to play, and we scored two goals. We dominated the game. In the second half, there was none yeah. of that. Everybody, everybody was giving balls away. They were not winning the duels, and it went against us. So, I think he wanted to finish off the game, get another goal, three one, but. Um, I definitely think that he should have realized that kind of the game was on, on the precipice and he should have had kind of put on someone to control the game more, 100%. Yeah. And I feel like Angie is doing what um, Klopp used to do also. Those types of coaches, they don't have a, I don't know, they don't like to put the brakes and, yeah. and defend a lead. So that's always happened to Klopp. And in, in some games, that was to Liverpool's detriment. So I feel like Spurs is also going through the same thing. There's, there needs to be a point where a coach realizes we have a lead, a very healthy lead. We don't need to attack. We don't need to do anything. Let this team come to us. We just control the ball and then yeah. we hit them on the counter. It's not, a, it's not a bad thing to play that way. But yeah, I understand yeah. some coaches, um, they, don't, yeah, they don't like doing that. And another player that I feel like needs to have um, Pep coach him is Werner. <laughs> 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 oh, shame. Because he also he also has a lot of opportunities. He makes amazing runs. Yeah, um, his pace is insane. He's always in good positions. I don't understand why doesn't he convert chances or or what's happening with him. But he also needs someone to coach. Him. But, yeah. I feel like Spurs yeah. have a very decent team, even with Son not being there. Yeah, they just yeah. need to they just need to individually coach some of the players so that yeah they can they can score because Werner is was once a striker even though he plays as a winger but um he's yeah. a he's a striker in, in my eyes and he should be converting goals or he should be scoring goals but he's not doing that at the moment. <laughs> you know, you're also one on ones in front of the keeper you don't trust him at all. <laughs> exactly. Him and Adama exactly. are the same WhatsApp group. But I just want to say before we move on quickly that do I, I yo I take that to heart. Thank you so much for comparing my manager to Klopp. Um, I, I appreciate that so much. It makes me smile after such a very week. Thank you so much. You, you, you mean head of uh, of global soccer at Red Bull, uh, Jurgen Klopp? That one. I mean, I mean, the Jurgen Klopp who won the Premier League title and took it away from Pep Guardiola. That Jurgen Klopp. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I think we can wrap that 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 part of the episode up. Um. What we did want to speak about was the amount of play, uh, football the players are playing. Um, so many players are getting injured. Um, we had the Rodri injury uh, a couple of weeks ago. 
uh, this past week, we got the Danny Carval injury, which was a horrific thing. I think it was three different types of injuries that happened in the space of like one night, um, which is crazy because, I mean, these players' bodies, they, they aren't able to withstand this much football. The recovery time is minimal. Uh, we're having so many players withdraw from the international teams during this break because they have either fitness issues or it's injury related. Um, Riaz, do you think it's just going to get worse from here? Do you think the the squads are going to end up getting bigger? Um, do you think all of the, the, the relevant countries' FAs are going to start uh, making the squads that's going to be submitted for the leagues larger than the 23 or the 24 that's that's currently in? Yeah, I think uh, I think Chelsea are ahead of the game and we made fun of them. But now it seems like yeah. they're ahead of the game because I think they have the right idea. I mean, Cole Palmer isn't in the uh, Conference League squad, which is ridiculous or something like that. He doesn't travel or whatever the case may be. Um, so I think, yeah, I, I, undoubtedly they're playing, they're playing too many games. And these injuries are not even coming from physical, like, knocks. They're not like... Um, yeah. duels that, are, that, 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 that players are going into and someone knocks the other one on the leg and they give him a dead leg or he tackles someone and he's injured. These are p- players that are running or twisting their knee or like it's fatigue. It's on the, fatigue. On the, on, yeah, it's fatigue. It's fatigue. Yeah. And um, that's at the end of the day because they're playing too many games. So I think at the end of the day, it's going to, if they continue and they are adamant with this whole, all this competition thing situation, I think they're going to have to kind of you have a broader squad and some some squad levels here for these games and some squad stays here for these games and that's and isn't there what's going to have to happen because the players are going to struggle and it's going to get worse before it gets better unfortunately for these players i mean it just so happens that Roddy was the one to come out and speak like against it and then he was the one to get injured the next week which is crazy um it's such a bad coincidence poor Roddy, but um yeah i think it's going to it's going to get worse before it gets better unfortunately yeah. Uh, Odua, you can you can go before. Yeah, man. Yeah, just 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 to mention the the Roger part. He he was playing in the in the Euros, right? And then a few weeks after, he has to be back for City. Other players in that in in that period were maybe on holiday, um, but majority of players in Europe were playing in the Euros. So I feel like players are not getting enough rest. There's way too many games, even with the Champions League format now. Way too many games. There's um, there's Champions League. There's you, you, um, what do you call this thing? There's the EFL in the Premier League. There's the FA Cup. Um, there's the National League. There's Afcon coming up. There's there's World Cup qualifiers. So. It's. I think. I feel like it's a lot, man. It's. It's for a lot. It's a lot for the players to endure. And even if I, I feel like, even if we, even if teams do bl- buy bigger squads, um, it's uh, the squads that maybe are going that they're going to use for the league cups won't be happy with that because every fan or every team, one every fan wants their team to win trophies. So if they are putting um, subpar squads to play these games or the FA Cups or whatnot, um, at the end of the day, the fans won't be happy. So I'm not sure what the remedy is, but Champions League needs to go back to the format that they used to. Cancel the National League or whatever that thing is, because I don't see what it's for. I don't see what it's there for. Um, Money, bro. Yeah, man. Money. <laughs> That's all it's these about right day, now. They, yeah, they, they, they're going to give us half performances from yeah. what we expect them to, to, to produce. And they will get injuries. And sometimes those injuries will lead to long-term illnesses. So, yeah, man, I don't feel like it's 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 healthy for the players. Um, it's more it's more, more football for the fans, <laughs> but at what cost? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah it, I feel like uh, these players deserve rest, man. Yeah, the, the, the Champions League previously, it used to be six games in in the group stage, right? You yep. play everybody in the group twice, um, six games. Now it's eight games for each team to play. Um, yep. You still end at the exact same time. Uh, I think it's like the first week of December or something, the last game is played. So yeah. that so just that shows you the exact same time. More... Yeah, you have to squeeze it in. There's an international break. There was an international break last month. There's an international break this month. 
There's another international break next month. So that's three international breaks as well. So all those players are going international duty. So you have to take that into account for club football because there's all those Champions League games. You need to squeeze that in. You have to squeeze yeah. the, the, the League Cup games in. You have to play your Premier League games or your your, net, your whatever league uh, or whatever country you're in. You have to play all of those games. These players are going to absolutely shatter themselves. <laughs> and I are. think that... Yeah, the the player the the player lifespan or the career lifespan. I think normally you would get to like 35, 36, and the player would like call it today. I think within the next like five to seven years, the the ceiling would be around about the thirty two year old mark, thirty one, thirty two mm. year old, and I think that's actually me thinking like last or four. Uh, that's actually just me <laughs> being a bit more generous uh, about it, but. I don't think players are going to have a long, long career anymore. The, the longer this goes on, the more the players are going to like absolutely shatter their bodies. And it's just going to get worse because these corporations and these organizations and these administrations, they're going to want more money. And they're seeing that all of these TV deals coming in for all of these extra games and they're going to want to add more games and more games and more games. The Champions League, unfortunately, will never go back to what it was. I highly doubt it because then that would be them taking money out of their pockets. And I just don't think that's that's a road that they're going to want to walk down. It's disgusting. Um, it's actually disgusting. Yeah, man. It's so yeah, man. I mean, we love football, man, but we don't want it to be at the expense of these players because these guys are also human. They have families. Um, yeah. They have families yeah. to feed. So if someone is out for for two months or three months and they're not earning a salary, um, at the end of the day, the family suffers and the player suffers as well. Um, so we love football, but we don't want it to, to come to this. So yeah, yeah they need yeah, to sort it sure. out ASAP. We hope so. Like, But I, I definitely think it's going to be that whole, like, if you are... If you have the means and you can afford it, buy yourself bigger squads because they'll allow bigger squads to be submitted for each of their leagues. And I think that's unfortunately going to be the route that they're going to go down to ensure that nothing changes in terms of all of these tournaments, but the, the clubs are able to, to submit a, a bigger squad for it. But yeah, moving on from that, our last segment is... Normally predictions, and we're going to keep on going with that. But this time, we're just going to be predicting who we think is going to be top goal scorer, top assister, and most clean sheets. Odua, let's start with you. Let's go with Ooh, top goal okay. scorer for you. Um, top goal scorer, I'll go with Cole Palmer. Um, just simply because of the way that he started, um, the amount of goals that he gets per game. He doesn't necessarily score in each and every game, but when he does score, he scores maybe two or three goals, so that's good. Um, and then in terms of top assists, I'll go for Mo Salah. Um, he's, he's, he's very unselfish lately. I don't know what's happening. Yeah. <laughs> um, he passes a lot, even though I feel like I, I still want the selfish Salah who shoots from <laughs> anywhere. Um, yeah. But then, yeah, he's, he's turned um, he's turned now into this passing player who tries to find his teammates. I'm not sure if he doesn't, if he's watching what's been happening online, if people are calling him selfish and, and whatnot. Maybe he's taking those comments or the coaching style from um, from Anna Slot is allowing him to do that, but um, he's taking less of a responsibility and he's giving it to his players. So um, I feel like he's going to have top assists for this season. Um, and then in terms of um, clean sheets, Liverpool are not conceding a lot of goals this season. Um, I would like that to continue. If that happens um, before December, we don't concede a lot of goals. Um, we have a lot of clean sheets. I feel like Liverpool will have a lot of clean sheets, but now with Alisson out for I think it's six weeks, so I don't, I, I can't give that to him. I'm not sure how Kelly is gonna perform. So the next best thing I would say is uh, City's considering goals as well. 
<sighs> Raya. I'll say give it to Raya. <laughs> I'll give it to Raya. I'm going to say it. Don't worry, uh, uh, AF. I'm going to say it. <laughs> oh, you have Nick's. You, you have Nick's, bro. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'll give it to Raya. Yes. You will top um, goal scorer. I, I, I mean, I'm just going to go boarding for tough goal scorer. It's going to be Erling Island, isn't it? It's, it's, I mean, it's a, it's a machine of note. And he, I'm not going to, okay, let me not jinx him. But um, yeah, I think it's going to be Erling Island. He's already got 10 in, what, seven games. Um, and um, I think there will be a couple that runs him close. Cole Palmer definitely being one of them. But um, I think Island will score another, what? He'll, he'll get close to 30 again this season. Um, or if not, way more. So, I think he's just a, a machine of note and he's just going to keep going. Um, so, yeah, Erling Island for, for the most goals for the season. Most assists, I'm going to go with Cole Palmer because another machine. Um, and I was going to go with Bukayo Saka because he's already like very much clear. I mean, Saka's like assisting in every game yeah. so far. Um, but I think that over time, Saka will start scoring and not assisting. And then Cole Palmer will just keep banging the assists through. Um, and Jackson will keep like end up scoring more goals, so Palmer will end up having more assists. And um, so. oh well, yeah, well you know I hope so. I'll, I, I like Cole Palmer; he's, he's, a, he's a beast. Um, but yeah, it's, it's between Palmer and Saka for me for for the assists. And then I'll say it if I will say it because <laughs> like uh, if for everything that that Odua said, it's all to do City concede. Um, especially with Adrodri, they're going to concede. Um, I was going to go with Ellison, but like I said, he's injured. And um, even if uh, Liverpool do keep green sheets, which I still expect them to do, with even with Ellison out, um, it doesn't really go to Ellison now. They they kind of have to do a 50-50 on the green sheets, right? Yeah. So I think the, the 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 then the next probable person is probably Raya, like Odwa said. It's probably going to be Raya. However. I'll give it to Onana. I'll go with the most clean sheets, golden gloves. I'll give it to Onana. I think he'll, he'll get it. Bro, I like it, it the most clean sheets. Is it not crazy how we played seven games, we have eight points, we are chilling 14th on the log, but he has four clean sheets. <laughs> that is quite that's crazy. Mental. That's mental. That's crazy, man. That's Absolutely crazy. mental. But yeah, uh, it, yeah, it shows you how, how much he's improved this season as well. Eh? Like he's saved united from the results being so much worse than what That's they true. have been which is weird he's, because he's, he's like coming to so often for us yeah true. yeah um, if you're up surprise me yeah um i'm not going to surprise anybody with okay, the goals fair like it's earning island um but i am going to stick with bukayo saka for assists i think he's gonna he's gonna just keep on keep on letting those stats build up um it's he's already, I think, about three or four ahead um, yeah. on the table right now. And then for most clean sheets, David Raya. Yeah, I think he's, I think Arsenal looks the best defensively um, in the Premier League. And uh, yeah, I, I don't see them conceding much throughout the season, in all honesty. That's true. That's a fair statement. No, no, I think like uh, Nottingham Forest, like what's his name, Matt Sells or whoever. Like random keepers. The thing is, keep... like with with these teams that choose to to have like a, a worldy of a season every other season, um, you don't know what's going to happen during the season. Like we've we've had it like a couple of seasons ago with Brighton, with Brentford, and like we they just like have these amazing starts, or like for three quarter of the season they look amazing, but then they fall off. Um, so you never know, like how like is this sort of form sustainable for any of these teams? Uh, so yeah, I just went with somebody that I know is trying, tried and tested. Um, David Raya, he, he brings the goods to the table every single game, and yeah, I, th I think he's going to keep it going. But so yeah, he's hardly injured. injured. Yeah. Sorry, he's hardly he's he's hardly injured as well. So yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And I think him as well, with as, as well as Onana, I think Raya as well. He's up his level as well this season, just as a, yeah. as a goalkeeper in general. I think both the two of them have up their games so it's like quite a bit considerably. So it's going to be good to see. Yeah. And that is all from us today, episode 88 in the books. 
thank you once again for watching. Thanks once again for being with us on this journey. Like this video, please subscribe to the channel. Tell your mom about it. Tell your family members about it. Tell all your friends about it. We appreciate all the support. Odua, where can the people find you? Um, on Twitter, my handle is dad underscore dude underscore Odua on the screen. Um, that's the only social platform that I'm on. Yeah, so yeah, find me there. Nice one, Diaz. Yeah, you can find me drowning my sorrows in. Oh, sorry. Um, oh, we're talking about Twitter. <laughs> okay. Um, at Parker underscore Diaz on X on Twitter. Um, yeah, come talk a lot of nonsense. Um, we talk a lot. Uh, are you, are you for, I mean, you you as well. You you talk a lot of nonsense on there. Like not not nonsense, but like you, like we're very active. Is what the word is. I think like active. I am I am very active at AF Parker six four two. Thanks for uh, the segue, Diaz. Appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. Um. Yeah, uh, I am very active on all social media platforms, but we are also very active on our Sportycast platform where you can find updates on threads, on Twitter. Um, we have news headlines, uh, game results, not only of soccer, uh, we have it for baseball, uh, American many football, um, yeah. NBA. Yeah, yeah, there's... We, we try to cover as, as much sport as possible. So, yeah, give us a, a follow on socials if you want to keep up with everything. Um, and, yeah, like, share, subscribe uh, on, on our posts on this video. But, yeah, that's all from us. Thanks, Odua, for always joining when we need you. And thanks, Yaz, for joining us again. I'm a 4343. Peace.